Every season I like giving my list of players who I'm buying stock in, those players that are either currently underrated, maybe they're coming off a subpar season, or maybe even someone who started showing serious potential in the prior season and they're due for a breakout year. But either way, it's those players whose stock were purchasing, figuratively of course, not literally, buying their stock while their current value is low, striking while the iron is hot before they go out and exceed expectations this season. So in this video, we're gonna be going over players that you should be buying stock in, and I would love to hear what you guys think on those players for which you're gonna be buying stock in. Of course, if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video, and in return, I'll be providing more NBA content like this. Now, I should be clear that buying stock in a particular player does not necessarily mean that they're going to have this monster season or that if I don't have a player on this list, it doesn't mean that I think they're gonna have a bad season. It's more so banking on players value that are currently low for which their value is going to exponentially increase this season so as an example Shea Gilgis Alexander I do not have on this list even though I fully expect him to have another excellent season and his value will likely go up a bit but his value and where he's rated at as a player currently is fairly high think of it like you're buying actual shares in the stock market you want to buy a stock when it's low with the anticipation that it's going to go up and sell high which, by the way, I will also have a video out on those players whose stock I'm going to be selling. But either way, first up on this list of whose stock I'm going to be buying this season, Mikhail Bridges. And this one is probably a no-brainer, an easy one to buy stock in. Now, Bridges and his value is already pretty high. I mean, he was a big piece of the Suns' success and that rise going to the finals and being one of the best teams in the league with his high-level defense and IQ. But then after he was traded to the Nets in the Kevin Durant deal and instantly became the team's best player, he was given the keys and the green light to be him to be the go-to guy on offense and right away you saw that Bridges has the star potential I think most of us saw when he was on the Suns but it was never really going to be realized playing alongside Devin Booker like the dude was still a great offensive player averaging over 17 a game with the Suns before they traded him goes to the Nets and starts putting up insane offensive numbers of over 26 points per game on 47 percent shooting 37 percent from three on near seven attempts per game he's definitely a guy I can see having a monster year on the Nets for a team that is kind of rebuilding but with Bridges being the focal point of the offense offense his value is going to go through the roof and I know I'm going to be going through some of these rather quickly but it's because I've got a lot of guys on this list and I want to make sure I cover all of them next up I've got Chet Holmgren and I know some will say well how can you buy stock of a player who hasn't played a single game in the NBA yet when you have nothing to compare it to well I'm mainly buying stock in Chet because well I think this isn't the majority of people but there is a good amount of fans who are always talking about how Chet his frame stature isn't going to hold up in the NBA case in point gets injured before even starting his rookie season and has to miss the whole year and when a player like that especially coming off a major injury yeah there are going to be people out on you and not living up to the hype of being the number one recruit in the nation coming out of high school but I actually think Chet is not only going to have a great career in the NBA but also a better than expected season this upcoming year for the Thunder and getting them to the playoffs especially with the great young supporting cast around him with SGA Josh Giddy, and Jalen Williams not saying that he's going to win rookie of the year have an all-star season but better than people are expecting in his rookie year next on the list I'm buying stock in Shaden Sharp I'm sure most people would say you should be taking Anthony Simons instead of him especially with the likely prospect Damian Lillard leaving the team and him likely being the number one option on the offense but Anthony Simon's stock is actually already somewhat high in seeing what he was able to do last season. But for Sharp, going into his sophomore year, one of the top recruits out of high school, former number seven overall pick, didn't get a lot of playing time to start the season. Then the Blazers shut down Lillard and he starts balling out towards the end of the year, averaging over 20 points per game in the final 10 to 15 games or so. Very athletic, fluid, high motor offensive player with Dame being out. And with the addition of Scoot Henderson, I see him having a breakout year. Only 20 years old, was one of the youngest rookies of his class last season. A lot of upside with this kid. Next on this list, and I think this one is going to be tough for me to admit because I've criticized his game and attitude a lot over the years, but I'm going to be buying stock in Jordan Poole. Look, everyone was out on Poole, myself included. High volume, inefficient offensive player, shot the Warriors out of games a lot of times. And last season, yeah, he still put up over 20 points per game, but it was a bad year for him. And at his contract especially, which we all know was a mistake in giving that to him, no one was high on pool going into this offseason. And it's why the Warriors traded him, giving up picks and taking on a soon-to-be-retired player in Chris Paul just to get out of his contract. But with Jordan Poole, Going to the Wizards, the Wizards who are likely going to be one of the worst teams in the league next season, rebuilding after trading Bradley Beal and Porzingis and stockpiling draft picks, Poole is going to have the green light to let the shots fly. 
And I'm not saying he's going to have some breakout year and he gets selected as an all-star, but it wouldn't shock me to see Poole averaging over 25 points per game, maybe even more, and have this bounce back year gaining his confidence back now that he no longer has to play on a nightly basis with a guy who tried to knock him out in practice. Next up on the list, I've got another guy coming off a big injury, and while his value probably still is high because of who he is, being a former number one overall pick, I feel like it's not as high for a potential monster season that he's about to have, and that's Cade Cunningham. Now, I know Cunningham hasn't thus far looked like the generational talent that he was being hyped to be when coming out of college. Only played 12 games last year, even in his rookie year he missed some time due to injury, but I still think this kid is super talented and will be a star in this league. Might not be in this upcoming season, but coming off this injury, the Pistons with their young core, they do have a lot of talent. I think you're going to see a big year from Cade when some some people might not be as high on him as they used to be. Another guy that I'm buying stock in, and I feel like this one is going to be probably the biggest one people disagree with me on, but I'm buying stock in Obi Toppin. Look, Obi Toppin, everyone is out on this guy, and I'm actually not a fan of Toppin as a player in general, but he does have talent, big bodied, athletic, probably shouldn't have been a top 10 pick, but it was a weak draft class in 2020. But Toppin getting drafted to the Knicks right when Tom Thibodeau took over. Yeah, that was setting him up for failure because Tibbs does not like guys that don't give an effort on the defensive end. Thus, he wasn't getting playing time. It impacted his confidence even on offense. But with Toppin now being traded to the Pacers, a team that is going to have less pressure on them than playing in front of the Madison Square Garden crowd that is looking to win now, a more well-balanced coach in Rick Carlisle, I expect Toppin to get more opportunities and thrive in a new environment where not much is going to be expected of him. I still don't think he's going to be that great, but if we're talking about buying low on a player whose stock is likely to rise, yeah, give me Obi Toppin. Next on the list, you know I've got to choose someone from the Chicago Bulls. I'm going with Kobe White. While yes, Bulls fans are excited about what to see from Kobe White this season after having one of his best seasons yet in his career, and a lot of Bulls fans are expecting him to have this breakout year, his value overall around the league isn't very high. In fact, there are probably a lot of NBA teams who haven't really seen much of Kobe White or think much of him. But after seeing Kobe improving so many aspects of his game from his decision making, his handles, his passing, even his defense, and after securing that contract and likely going to be getting more opportunity when it comes to playing time, potentially even a starting role at point guard. And with the work that we've been seeing from Kobe, putting in this offseason, seeing him in open runs and pro-am games, yeah, I think Kobe is due for a big season, and it's why I'm buying stock in him. Next up, this one may seem a little odd, but I'm buying stock in Scotty Barnes. I'm buying the dip on this guy. After having that great rookie season, wins rookie of the year, looks like a future star in the making, so much so that the Raptors were hesitant on including him in a trade that involved Kevin Durant, he then follows it up with a pretty underwhelming sophomore campaign. Didn't really help that the Raptors overall had a tough season, which didn't help his stock, but with everyone being out on Barnes, and with Fred Van Fleet no longer on the team, Barnes likely going to be assuming a bigger role. Yeah, I'm buying stock on him to have a bounce back here. And then finally, the last player I'm buying stock in is actually a guy I just mentioned, and that's Fred Van Fleet. Say what you will about his contract. Yeah, it's a bad contract. I can't believe the Rockets gave him a max level deal. And yeah, Fred Van Fleet was pretty meh last season relative to his all-star season the year prior. But going to a team like the Rockets that is in desperate need of leadership, in need of a point guard, and who will become their best player. I see Fred Van Fleet having one of these great seasons now that he's got his money. He's not really going to be playing for anything because the Rockets aren't going anywhere. And because Van Fleet's perceived value in stock is so low right now, I don't see how you can't buy stock in this guy going into the season in a new role on a new team. But anyway, these are the guys I'm buying stock in for this upcoming season. Let me know where you guys agree or disagree and some of the players you see having seasons where they'll be exceeding expectations. Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.